Hey everybody, welcome to another Monday with Matt. I am Matt, an instructor here at the Florida Aquarium. And I wanna say thank you to our new sponsor, Public Supermarket Charities for helping us out, get these C-SPANs out for you guys so that you can enjoy all the fun entertainment that we have to offer and learn some stuff as well. So today what I wanted to draw was actually my favorite animal or a group of animals, which are gonna be things like alligators and crocodiles. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with a sort of simple uh, cartoony alligator to get started. And then we'll get into a little bit more realistic ones and talk about the differences and stuff like that. So let's get started with our basic shape here for our little cartoony alligator. And I'm gonna make a big circle, kind of an oval shape. This is gonna be the body of our alligator. And then we're gonna give it a little tail. It's gonna be kind of a, a little stumpy tail. Oh, hello, Kimbra, and hello, Virginia. Um, we're gonna make it, this is cartoony, so it's not gonna be, you know, 100% accurate here. Little cute little tail like that. All right, see how we're, where we're going with this here. And then for the head, uh, we're gonna give the head here and then a mouth and just kind of come out like this. So uh, this is our basic structure. And then we're gonna have some little alligator legs here. One in the front, because you can't really see the other one on the other side, and one in the back. Make it look like a little knee. There we go. All right, now we're gonna give our alligator cartoony eyes since this is a cartoony alligator, so big circles there. And then his nose is gonna come up a little bit like that. Just getting this rough shape in here so that uh, you guys can draw it from this, you know, skeleton, so to speak. Not all the animals I've drawn have a skeleton, but the alligator does. So here we go. All right, so th this is where I'm gonna stop with this part of it, and then we're gonna go to our next layer here. We're gonna switch over to our ink brush, and we're gonna, we're gonna get the details in on there. Hello, Rachel. And uh, yes, Rachel, of course, I'm gonna be drawing a gharial. The gharial is the coolest animal on the planet, just so you all know. It's, it's my favorite animal, so I will spend a little bit of time on the awesome gharial. So here we go, we're gonna draw the snout here, give it a little nostrils. We're kind of a side view, but it's gonna be turned a little bit in space. And then the mouth, the mouth of the alligator is very curvy. So I'm gonna kind of represent that. And of course this one is a cartoon one and it's gonna be a very happy alligator. So it's got a big smile on its face. I'm gonna give a big eyeball here. And then the nose is gonna kind of curve up into that like that. And then we're gonna draw the other eyeball back behind there. Remember, this is a cartoon alligator. Maybe give a couple little lines there. And we'll, let's see. We'll make this alligator looking up behind it. I always think that looks kind of cute when they do that. I mean, when cartoons do that. <laughs> okay, here we go. And now we're gonna give this bottom jaw some attention here. Notice this little bit of a curve here, and then they've got this big jowl because alligators, of course, have really, really, really strong jaws. The strongest jaws of any animal around today belong to this crocodilian group, and they're pretty intense. So we're gonna put some teeth in here. Now, this is an alligator, so we really normally don't see the teeth sticking up. Of course, there aren't any alligator orthodontists, so you might see one with teeth sticking up because their teeth are crooked, stuff like that. But, uh, but this one's gonna have good teeth. All right, so now we're gonna go to the back of the head here, and I'm gonna make it a little bit square, and I'm gonna do this little space here. That's the ear. Alligators have an ear right behind their eyes, and the cool thing is they can actually close this ear up. It keeps water out, and if they have children that are really being annoying, they can just close, no, that's not true. But, but they can close that ear to keep the water out, and they can, of course, close their nostrils, which is really cool. I mean, I can't do that unless I pinch it with my nose. They can also close their eyes, and they actually have three eyelids, uh, an upper eyelid, a lower eyelid, and this one that slides across that's clear, and uh, that's like built-in protection for them, almost built-in goggles or something like that. All right, we're gonna give our alligator his little foot here. And I'm only gonna put three toes, you know, like cartoons don't always have the right number of toes. I'm just gonna put three toes there. And we're gonna do his little back foot here. And three on that one too. 
And then we're gonna give him his little alligator belly. Right, looking like a cute little alligator. And his little tail. And now we're gonna do the back. Now for the back, what I wanna do is I'm gonna put some spikes on the back because alligators have these bony plates underneath their skin on their back, on their neck. They're called osteoderms and they're literally bony plates right under the skin. They help the alligator with several things. One of the most important is they help them to thermoregulate, which means to get that heat from the sun to recharge their body. So we're gonna just draw some little spikes here. This is where this little red line can help me out because you know, I didn't draw the spikes in my rough sketch. I could have, but I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to do it like this, but now I'm following that line, so it tells me where it's gonna go. And then come down here like this, and here it kind of splits. There we go. Now, they've also got more up here, so I'm just gonna represent that with some little ovals for the scales up here. And let's turn off our sketch layer we can get a better look. We'll give him some little toenails. Alligators have webbed feet in the back and those actually help them to keep from sinking into the mud. That also helps them to, if they're females, to build their nest. Uh, what it doesn't really help them do is swim. They use this mo normally much longer, powerful tail to swim through the water. Yeah. All right. Now, um, maybe I'll hint at some scales like this. I'm not gonna draw every scale. It would get really busy, and for a cartoon alligator, that's just too much. I might even do a couple little circles here to represent some of those scales. And then we're gonna give him a little bit of color. So I'm gonna put a layer underneath here. Now, cartoon alligators are often drawn as being green, but if you look at real alligators, they're not green. Alligators are not green, so I'm gonna make my alligator more accurate, and when they're babies, they are mostly black or gray, and they have yellows and oranges and browns and all kinds of colors like that. As they get older, the yellows and oranges fade away, and they're mostly dark on the top and light underneath. With that word that you've heard me say before, if you've been on this Mondays with Matt, you've heard me say the words counter shading, and that's the same thing going on here. Light on the, or dark on the top, light underneath. So we're gonna give this alligator um, kind of this dark gray color. We'll make it an adult alligator. Now look, if you wanna make a cartoon alligator and make it green, then that's fine. You can do that. I'm just telling you, next time you look at a real alligator, notice that they're not green. Sometimes they have duckweed on them or algae growing on them that can make them look green, but um, not really green. All right, so we'll just get, I'm just gonna make this real simple here so I can color it in with a, a fill tool because then I'm gonna do the belly and the belly I'm gonna make sort of a, sort of a light color here. Do that powerful jowl. And the, the white comes right up a little bit onto the top jaw with most alligators. That. Whoa, that was not what I was looking to do. <laughs> I must have a hole there. Let's try this. There we go. Then I'll fill this in manually. Go back to this one here. Now, this is alligators. We're talking about specifically other types of crocodilians, which could be crocodiles, which could be caimans, which could be gharials. Um, they're not all the same color, although none of them are really, really green. Maybe some of them might be a kind of olive green. Most of them are grays or tans. So occasionally you'll see kind of a yellowy color, but um, there's even some that are sort of orangish looking, but mostly they're gonna be grays and tans. Our American crocodile, for example, is usually either a light gray or beautiful tan color. And of course, we'll get the eyes in here. Whoops. Now, here in the Tampa Bay area, we do have alligators. We don't really have crocodiles here. There are crocodiles in Florida. In fact, Florida is the only place on the planet where alligators and crocodiles live together naturally, and that is down in South Florida. Miami and the Keys, 
South Everglades area. That's where you can find both of those species. But around here, uh, it would be really, really rare. And there was, or there were some crocodiles that were found here, or a crocodile that was found here in Tampa Bay several years ago. But that was a very strange anomaly. Normally, the furthest north you'll find them on this west side of Florida is going to be maybe Fort Myers and usually a little south of there. Okay, let's turn this guy off here. We'll go back to our pencil. Because now that we've got our cartoon alligator, I really want to kind of focus on the difference between alligators and crocodiles. So what I'm going to do is just draw the heads of both of these animals, because there are a lot of different ways you can tell the difference, but one of the easiest ways is by the, uh, the head. Oh, hey, Stacy. One of my friends from my cruising groups. All right, so we're going to draw a circle. This is going to be kind of the jaw and where the eye is going to sit on top of here. And then we're going to do the mouse. It's not going to be that different from our cartoon gator. You know, kind of the same, kind of a similar shape here. And then we'll just make a little square back here. But then this is where it's going to be a little bit different. So we're going to make the eye kind of this triangle, kind of sticks up a little bit. This is really important because the nostril on the alligator sticks up a little bit. And the this is true on crocodiles as well. The eyes stick up ears stick up, which means that this animal can swim through the water and see and smell and hear with while hiding most of its body, which is pretty important if you're trying to sneak up on like a bird or something like that. We'll get this mouth in here. Now some of you out there probably know the difference between alligators and crocodiles. Like I said, there's more than one right answer to that question, but one of the most common ones has to do with the teeth. So that's what I'm going to draw here. I really want to focus on the teeth, this big jowls here, some osteoderms. And the difference is the alligator has in the top jaw, they have little indentations. So their bottom teeth kind of fit in those and normally are, like I said before, they're kind of hidden away. Whereas their top teeth pointing down, you can usually see some of those. Now, alligators have hollow teeth, and they lose teeth all the time. Their teeth are hollow, they lose one, there's one growing underneath it. Picture some stacked cups or something like that. That's kind of how alligator teeth work. And they don't ever lose two right next to each other at the same time. Pretty cool, right? Now, they keep growing teeth through their whole life, too. So you could see an alligator missing a few teeth. In fact, it'd be hard to find an alligator that wasn't missing at least a couple of teeth. But let's go ahead and I'm gonna fade this out a little bit just so it's not in our way. And we're gonna make this alligator look a little bit more finished. Get the eye in here. Now another thing that's kind of cool about alligators is that around their eye, they have kind of a yellowish white color. And so the rest of them remember is like this dark gray, almost black. It's the opposite of, say, when like a, like a baseball player puts the black under their eyes so it kind of absorbs the reflection of the sunlight and keeps the glare out. Well, for alligators, they're nocturnal most of the time, so they're hunting at night, they're more active at night, and they want to get as much light into their eye as possible. So by having a light color underneath there, it helps reflect more, eye, uh, more light into their eyes. And of course, they have elliptical pupils like cats. Here, there's our alligator eye. Their eyes also have reflective cells in the back of them, which is pretty cool. And if you see alligators at night and you shine a light right in the right way, uh, they, are, they will glow kind of a reddish orange color instead of like your normal cat that might glow kind of a green or yellow color. So here's our alligator mouth. We really usually get these big teeth. Now, another thing about alligator teeth is that they, they're not, on big alligators, they're not really that sharp. On little alligators, they still have a little bit of sharpness because they're small. But if you think about it, if you have huge, strong jaws, I mean, there's a lot of different figures I see on how strong their jaws are. But one of the common ones I see is about 2,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. And imagine that. You don't have to have very strong jaws if you have that much pressure. You just crush whatever <laughs> whatever you need. Whereas something that's eating, uh, say something that's, that's softer, 
that, that doesn't have the jaw strength, I should say, uh, they need to have smaller points so that they can get most of that pressure focused on one spot. And then they can get their food. So here we go. All right, we'll draw a few osteoderms. We'll get this jowl in here. So here's our alligator. I'm gonna move him up here. Turn off our sketch layer. And we'll go back to, I'll go back to here. I didn't do a lot of detail on this, but um, I just wanted to give you the general idea here. Now we're gonna do a crocodile. So for the crocodile, uh, we're gonna kinda do the same thing. We're gonna start with a circle, a little rectangle off the end of it. But our nose is gonna be a little bit longer. And if you're looking top down, it's a little bit pointier as well. This is probably a little too long. There we go. And then the eye sticks up. So it's very similar to the alligator. I mean, to a lot of people, they, they look almost identical, but they are very different animals. Maybe this is not as big. And, and keep in mind this too. There are, right now, there are officially 24 recognized species of crocodilian. And the way, reason I say officially is because that number is almost definitely going to change to 25 or 26. The science is already being done to, to separate some species that we know about. But a lot of these, there's only two alligator species, but there are quite a few crocodile species and they don't all look exactly the same. They have different colors, they have different shapes of their head and stuff like that. So, um, so I'm drawing sort of your generic crocodile, which is kind of what our American crocodiles look like, is sort of your generic crocodile. Get this strong jaw in here. Okay. Now when we draw the teeth on this one, right here, there is a notch. And uh, this is the fourth tooth back on the crocodile, and it sticks up through that notch there. And so you can always see that tooth. Now, most of the time, crocodiles are a little toothier anyway. So usually you can see more of those teeth, even though technically they're, they're not necessarily sticking up, but you can usually see them there a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead to our ink layer. Yes, Landon, I am gonna do the, uh, the gharial after this because it is my favorite animal on the planet. And I'll tell you about them when I do draw that. And Landon works here at the aquarium. So does Rachel. So people that know me know that the gharial is like my all-time favorite animal. So, all right, so we've got this curve here, uh, but this is just a little bit narrower. I'm gonna draw this tooth here. You can still sort of see these teeth going down. Now, I'd really have to spend a little bit more care and time to get these teeth exactly right, but I wanted to emphasize this fourth tooth that's sticking up because that is the crocodile thing. Caimans don't have that. Gharials don't have that. Only crocodiles have that. Sometimes crocodiles have these big kind of horn structures back here, depending on the species. And then one of the other ways that scientists will tell the difference between not just alligators and crocodiles, but different crocodiles and things like that are how these scales on their back lay. So there could be different counts of them, there could be different numbers of, of rows basically, they could be organized differently. All right, let's get our crocodile eye here. We'll give him a little eyelid. All right, so without going into too much detail, turn off our sketch layer. A little bit, little bit longer, pointier snout if you're looking from the top. This is the alligator and this is the crocodile, but also just, um, 
just some subtle differences there. And you have to look at a lot of these to get to where you can really tell them apart easily, but you can do that if you look at them long enough. Now let's do the gharial. And gharials are really strange looking crocodilians. It's one of the reasons why I like them. So we're gonna do the head here and we're gonna get the, the neck coming off this way. But then the snout is where it's gonna get really strange because gharials have a really long snout. I mean, a really long snout. And if it's a boy, they will have this big growth on the end, which is called the gara, which is a Hindi word, which means pot. If it's a female or a younger animal, they won't have that. The mouth is pretty straight on the gharial, but you can see a lot of their teeth. It kind of curves up a little bit here to make it look like they have a smile. Their eyes are really far up on their head, which is really interesting. Usually you can see two of them. It makes them look a little cartoony, I won't do that. All right, let me see if I can make this guy look less like a Muppet by <laughs> doing this incline. Because right now he's looking a little bit Muppety. Not that I have anything against Muppets. All right, so uh, let's give him his Gara. We'll make this a boy. And one of the cool things about Garials is that um, when they have their offspring, their baby Garials, which is really cute, the males, so in most crocodilians, the females will do this, but in the Garials, the males will actually provide some parental protection or care. So you'll see photographs of male gharials with a bunch of babies on them. Now actually, all the species of crocodilian have been observed with some sort of um, male care for their young, but only in captive environments. Let's see if we can get these eyes right. <laughs> Still looks like a cartoon, right? One of the challenges of drawing gharials is that there's, there's a lot of subtlety there that's hard to get with just a quick ink drawing. Now they do have jaws that are fairly strong, but not nearly as strong as their crocodile and alligator cousins. These guys are really specialized for eating fish. That's what this long snout is all about. It's all about, let's see if I can get that one back there. It's all about catching fish. In fact, their snout can be kind of fragile. So like zoos and stuff that have these, which uh, St. Augustine Alligator Farm has them and Lowry Park or Zoo Tampa has them, uh, they have to be really careful when handling these because their jaws are actually pretty fragile. Now, I like gharials for a lot of reasons. They, they live in India, uh, which I like India a lot, and uh, they're so different, they're unique, they're one of the largest species of crocodilian, and yet, they are pretty much harmless to humans because they're so specialized in eating fish. They don't make the mistakes that some crocodilians might make or just straight up try and eat you like certain crocodiles will. So they're, um, they're really cool animals, very cool. All right, let's open up a new layer here. Go back to my pencil. Now what I wanted to do today since it is May 4th, I thought I'd do a fun drawing that's not necessarily super aquarium specific, but uh, I think you guys will appreciate this. So um, move this down a little bit here. And I'm not gonna say what it is right away, but I feel like you guys will be able to guess it after, after a bit. So let me just start drawing here. go. And if you think you know what it is, you can, can guess. <laughs> I don't know that I'll be able to see it, but uh, I'll try and peek my head up every now and then and see if I can read a comment or two.
Those are maybe a little too big. Let's see, get a little nose in here. Okay, anybody guessing up there? Let me take a look here. Don't see anybody, but the, the comments don't stay. So uh, for me, they don't. So let's see, we'll start putting some ink on this little fella. <laughs> I think people are starting to catch on. Yes, since it is May 4th, I wanted to do something kind of Star Wars related. And so you're getting the, the child. I guess it's, it's whatever species Yoda is that they won't tell us what it is, I think. And I don't know. I just watched that show. So it's pretty cute, right? So we'll just do a little bit of fun Star Wars stuff. Now, next week, we'll be back to do more of these. So if you do have animals you'd like to see me draw, comment in the comments here, and I will go back and, and look through them, and I'll take that into consideration when I'm choosing next week's animal. Also, make sure that you tune in on Tuesdays for Tom, as he will make some really cool music for you guys to enjoy. All right, Let, so if, I'll color them in real quick. Let's see, we'll see if we can do it this way. He is green, right? So crocodiles are not green, but whatever little animal species that the Yoda thing is, is it's green. So we'll do that. Little white highlights. Now, if you guys draw stuff, remember to post it in the comments below. Let me know to, that you've drawn it so I can so I can take a look. I love looking at the drawings that you guys make. It's one of my favorite things to do after these are over. Let's go back and look for drawings. There we go. May the fourth be with you. I actually drew, um, I'll show you these real quick before I go. I was practicing, because I, I practice these, so I make sure I do a good job for you guys. And I'll show you a couple of them that I did here. Um, oops. Last night I did a Porg. And this is my practice Yoda here. There we go. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and put my pencil down. Thank you guys for watching. Until next week, I will see you later.